Hello and welcome back. So just a quick video today, I want to make some custom test leads for my multimeter to go into a breadboard. It's not always good using the pointy end of the regular test leads, but um, I think I can make something better and easier to use. So all you need really is some 4mm banana plugs, a little bit of wire, these pin headers, some heat shrink, and soldering iron. But first, let me just show you something about the 4mm banana plugs that you may want to know before you go out and buy some. So this is a pretty common type of banana plug. You see how it has that cage? And that cage basically, when you shove it into a um, opening for it, it crushes the cage down and makes the contact on the actual pin. This is very standard and these are pretty cheap. but Here's the deal. If you're going to buy the like really cheap AliExpress type, you know, like 40 cents per banana plugs, don't get this type. Instead, you should be getting this type. You see how the banana plug is actually just folded metal? So there's no actual break between the springs that's supposed to tension on the sides of the um, of the receptacle and the actual metal contact. So, if you can, only buy this kind, because I find like the 4mm holes in the multimeter aren't well suited to press hard on the cages, so if you get a cheap cage one like this, it probably won't make good contact, and at least that's what I've found in my experience. So, if you got the choice, go with this kind and not this kind. But anyways, knowing that, let's move on. So with my good banana plug in hand, it's time to disassemble it. So they have a screw here. You just unscrew this, set the screw aside, and then you just pull this apart, and there we go. Now, the screw is supposed to kind of hold the wire inside here, but the wires I'm using are a little bit small for this because I only really do small stuff with it, right? It's not a big deal. So I'm going to solder this one in. Now the important part is you can't really get solder around these uh, this, these threads here, and you really should avoid getting solder on the back side because if you end up with too much solder, you won't be able to screw the, the screw in hard enough to hold this without wiggling. So I use the helping hands here. I'm going to just put that through the hole like that, and you're also going to need a really hot iron. Now my irons at 400 degrees usually 400 degrees C that is usually I solder around 350 degrees C but we need the extra thermal energy here to be able to heat up this whole metal bit it's in my helping hands that are covered with heat shrink so it shouldn't transfer to the helping hands too much but still it's still a lot of heat so also you gotta strip your wire this is uh, silicone wire I love silicone wire because it's really flexible you can use PVC insulated stuff, but much harder to strip. This one I just strip with my fingernails. Just grab a bit, pull. So there we go. So I'm going to take this, I'm just going to put it through here, and I'm just going to tin this piece just to make it easier. So I have my soldering iron here, clean the tip. Tip needs more cleaning than that. Okay. And now I'm going to press this against here and flow some solder. Now ideally you want the solder to flow through the wire onto the iron, but pre-tinning the iron helps transfer the heat. Now I really want the solder to be inside here, so I'm going to go with my soldering iron to pre-tin the inside here, but I'm going to rest it on the outside, and if I get a little bit of buildup, I'm going to have to knock that off after, or else the uh, sleeve won't fit. Okay, so here we go, the super hot iron. I'm going to rest my pinky on the on the table here, just to be able to push up with more strength. I also tape down my helping hands, it makes it easier. So I'm going to hold that on there, and it's going to take a few seconds. You can't just hold it on there and go, you have to give it some time to heat up, transfer some heat. Okay, not yet. I'm going to put a little bit more 
on the iron itself. But you want to be able to get this banana jack hot enough to melt on its own. There we go. There we go. Gonna keep heating it up. Pull that away. We're just going to take a look at the underside here. We did get a little bit of solder there, but that's okay. We'll deal with that. Okay, now you take your wire. And same deal, you're going to apply heat underneath here, but I'm going to angle it this way so I can bring the wire in the correct direction and go right on top there. I haven't actually thought of how you guys are going to see what I'm doing. So this might be a little challenging, but I think I'm going to go left-handed here. Not a good idea working with hot things uh, with a different hand, but whatever. Okay, get that heat in there nice. Hold still while it crystallizes. There we go. Now you have to let this whole thing cool for a little bit, so I'm going to let it cool and then we'll be right back. Okay, now that this is cool to the touch, I'm going to take it out of the helping hands. Okay, and you see we have a little bit of a bump here on the outside, so I'm just going to take an emery board. You get these at the dollar store or the beauty supply store. It's just for um, like uh, filing down your nails. I use these a lot just for this kind of stuff. You just want to hit that with the emery board just so there's no protruding bumps Then we can slide on the sleeve, and that should go this way, like that. Put in that tiny little screw. If you have a magnetic screwdriver, this would be a perfect time to use it. I don't have one at hand. I'm still kind of in the process of setting myself up in the in my basement here. So I'm gonna give that a twist. Yeah, of course. When you start it in cross-threaded, you uh, can just give it a little twist backwards to straighten it out and then charge on. There we go. Tightening this. Now, we have some solder interfering a little bit. Hopefully we'll be able to power through it. If not, I'm going to strip the screw. There we go. No more movement on there. Perfect. Now for the other end, we're going to strip a little bit away again. Not too much on this side. Okay, just really short. I'm going to pre-tin this end as well. So we have our iron already hot. I moved down the iron to 350 degrees, so we don't need that much heat on this end. Okay, so that's pre-tinned. Now your pin headers. Now the pin headers are dirt cheap on eBay, AliExpress, or whatever, usual suspects. I'm going to cut off just one length of it, or one section of it. I'm going to hold it by the long section and pre-tin the short section. Be really quick about this because it is plastic on the other end. Okay, take your wire. Get it ready. Might have to go left-handed again, which is not too big of a deal in this case because we don't have to hold it there for long. But you basically touch the two wires together, or the wire and the pin header together, and then just touch it with the iron. Actually, before I forget, you need to cut yourself a little bit of heat shrink sleeving. That was close. I don't know how many times I forgot the heat shrink sleeving, but this isn't the first and it won't be the last time. So there's a little piece of heat shrink. Put it over the wire. It's barely the size of the wire, but that's that's okay. Come over here. I'm gonna rest my, my finger on my helping hands here just so I can support it easier. And blind as a bat and left-handed, here it goes. There we go. It should be soldered on. I smell a little bit of plastic, so I think I heated up too much. Oh, yeah, I did. And my wire is a little cockeyed on there. Let me give you a look at that. Yep, 
Yeah, you see I touched it with the iron right there. And it is a little cockeyed, but it will hold. Grab my emery board. Just sand off the sharp edge there. There we go. That's good. And now I'm going to put the heat shrink sleeve over it. If it fits over my, my mess I made here. Let's see. Yeah, there it goes. It's on, and now I'm just going to shrink it down. I have a uh, hot air gun. It's actually a SMD reflow station. I'm just going to shrink it down. And that's what it looks like. Now let's see this thing in action. So here we go. We have a multimeter, we have a breadboard, we have an unknown LED and an unknown resistor that we want to check. So in my multimeter, I'll plug in a lead that I made earlier. So this is the same th same deal. It's a banana plug and uh, it's soldered to a wire. This one happens to be red. So take the wire to the end and there we go. There's that familiar connection. So I'm going to plug that into positive or the red lead. Then I have the one we just made, this black one here. And you follow it down and you have that familiar connection that we made. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to put that into the common. I'm going to pull this down here and let's start with the resistor. We want to know what kind of resistor this is, right? So I'll go ohms, take my red, go on one side like that. Take my black, go on the other side like that, and 0.975k ohms. I think this is supposed to be a 1 meg ohm. And uh, for all you people that are going to comment that, well, the connections and the breadboard are dicky and your wires are too small and etc., think about it this way. If that's a 1 meg ohm resistor, we should have added resistance to it, right? So it wouldn't be showing less because it's it's because the resistance are, is more, right? It doesn't make any sense. So this will be just fine for that. There might be some resistance in these wires. Nah, nothing. So it's it's okay to see a couple ohms, like one or two ohms, especially if you're just dicking around with breadboards. There's no problem, right? Don't make a, a mountain out of a molehill. So let's try our LED now. Trying to get these in the correct holes. Switch this to diode mode. There we go. Diode turns on. Face that up to the camera so you can see. Okay, so that diode is on and it's on conducting at 2.695 volts, so like 2.7 volts. Pretty typical for an LED. So there you have it. For very minimal components, we're talking about a banana plug, which is worth about, I don't know, 40 cents or something Canadian. So if you're American, that's what, like a dime or something? Then a little bit of wire. I like silicone wire instead of the PVC stuff because it's more flexible. And pin headers. That's all you really need. Thanks for watching. See you next time.